Hello Church and welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Lent. Our service today will include Holy Communion as we join each other electronically to welcome the presence of Christ. If you have not already done so, please pause the video and prepare your bread items and wine or juice at this time. The announcements for today. First of all, members of Bethlehem Lutheran Church, the annual meeting of the congregation will be held next Sunday, February 28th, immediately following worship. The meeting will be in person, but may also be attended electronically. All members are encouraged to attend. Also a reminder, look for the emails. Uh, I will be hosting coffee and chat again on Tuesday, the 23rd at 3.30. With that, let us begin worship, inviting God into our presence in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. God of mercy, Jesus was faithful even in the face of death, yet we so often fail you in day-to-day -day living. Our commitment is shaky, our promises are unreliable, and our actions are questionable. We quit when discipleship becomes difficult and complain that we don't get enough credit. Forgive us our neglect of your mission and lukewarm devotion and wake us up to the urgency of your gospel. Amen. God is gracious and pardons all of our shortcomings. May the giver of life forgive us our sins and restore us to the joy of discipleship and service. For the sake of Jesus, our faithful Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us together pray the prayer of the day. God of wisdom, you challenge us to expand our minds to your inclusive view of the world. Teach us to welcome the stranger, whoever they may be, and to open ourselves to having our minds changed and our hearts transformed. For the sake of Jesus our Lord, Amen. Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right, and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander it with their tongue, and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall be, never be moved. Here is the reading. The Holy Gospel for this first Sunday in Lent is from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Just then a lawyer stood up and to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And he answered, you should, shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place,
place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Hi, my name is Charlie. Hi, my name is Hank. Today we're going to talk about the cost of following Jesus. So, how do we buy stuff? Mm, you buy money. money. Yes, with money. Are you good at guessing how much things cost? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay. So we're going to play a little game. So you each have a wallet, so you can come get your wallet. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. What, do you, what do you have in your wallet? Mm, money. Money. Okay, there's money in there. So I want you to put down how much money you think each of these items cost. So what you if can put. I think this one costs all of Well, let's see. How much money do you have in your wallet? Let's put how much you think each item costs. You can just set the money on each item. So you have a precision Where logging did I get tracker. This money? And Where you. Where did I get this money? It's pretend. Huh. Okay. So you've got a logging tractor, you've got some jewels, you've got a Lego set, a movie, some salsa, and some chocolate. I think that's $40. I think this is... I'm gonna go with that. I think that's zero cents. I think that would be like... Let's see. I think that's $5. Okay, do you think the movie's $5? The salsa's $5? I think $10. you think the movie's 10 Okay. I think, I think this Lego set is one. Mm, Charlie thinks it's 50 All right, did you get everything? How about that chocolate bar? How much do you think that chocolate bar is under Where your is wallet, it? Charlie? Uh -huh. $1? Okay. I think that's $1. All right. And 50 And 50 oh, Okay. <laughs> So we've got a Lego set that was 50 and 20. We've got a logging thing that was 240 there. We've got a movie that was five or 10. Some jewels that were 100. Some salsa that was five. And some chocolate that was 51 or a dollar. You guys, some of them were pretty close. So everything costs money, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. So now here's a tricky question. How much does it cost to follow Jesus? Here. Zero money. Here you go. Zero Hold that up. Okay. How much does it cost to follow Jesus? Nothing. Zero money. Zero money. How do you know that? Because he wants nice. us to follow us and he, he's, he's our father and he's nice and he died on the cross. Oh, Plus. you're good. Plus. It and doesn't cost $5, and it doesn't cost $20. It doesn't cost every single penny that's in your wallet, does it? No. I know. Zero. So, we know that we can't become a follower of Jesus by paying a bunch of money. 
You can't get into heaven by paying money. The richest man in the world, if he doesn't give up his heart, soul, and follow Jesus and love him and try his very, very best, he's not getting into heaven, no matter how much money he has. So Jesus said to follow him would cost us everything, but not in money, right? So what does that mean? Like be nice to him and be kind mm -hmm. and follow his rules. And give him hugs. Rules. Yeah, and no, follow his rules. Him. Yes. And give him hugs. So it means Jesus said we need to give our whole lives to him. So instead of putting money there, what would you put there? If you clear all that stuff away Nothing. and you stand on that bench, can you clear all that stuff away? Okay. Take it down. There you go. You got enough space? All right, now you can stand on there. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you're standing here. We're not just giving money. We're giving him our whole lives. Yeah, we're giving him his whole lives. Some people may think that the cost is too high, but Jesus loves us and wants us to discover his wonderful life. When we give our whole life and our whole selves to Jesus, we begin to discover his life, his power and his love. Following Jesus costs us everything, but it is so worth it. So let us pray. Dear God, help us to give our whole lives to you. We know that following Jesus will be hard sometimes, but we also know that you will keep us in your love and will help to make our life a wonderful and exciting adventure. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Amen. Limits. We live with limits every day. Limits take on many different forms and come from a variety of sources. Most of us have learned that when we set limits or live within those limits set by others, we are more comfortable, safer, and more productive. In our home, Mona and I have learned that we can both be more comfortable if we live within one set of limits in particular. Mona is more comfortable in a cooler environment. I, on the other hand, prefer to be in a warmer atmosphere. So over the years, we have adopted a couple of compromise limits. Mona knows the lower limit on our thermostat, and I know the upper limit. Whether heating or cooling, those limits are not very far apart. They do, however, help us each to be comfortable. As a recovering workaholic, I have also learned to set limits on myself in other ways. I have found that I am happier healthier, and more relaxed if I keep my life in some kind of balance. So I place limits on work, and I try to look at the possible consequences involved with taking on yet another project or committee. I want time for myself and for my family and friends. In today's Gospel reading, Luke gives us another picture of God. And through Jesus, we are taught how God expects us to behave. The story actually begins back in chapter 9. There Jesus is reported to have set his face toward Jerusalem, toward his ultimate destiny. That didn't set well with the Samaritans, and they promptly rejected Jesus. In today's reading, the story begins as a fairly common discussion. Jesus and a lawyer or interpreter of the scriptures were engaging in a theological debate. It was the common way one teacher of the law tested another. 
In the exchange with Jesus, however, the lawyer started to get uncomfortable. The two men were in complete agreement about the commandments. That wasn't the problem. The lawyer seems to have a sneaky suspicion that in all of his study of the Torah, he has missed something. Perhaps he had been around Jesus long enough to have heard another version of the story that he himself had taught. Even though the lawyer knew the law and worked hard to live within it, on this day he has doubts. The question involved his own righteousness. The lawyer wanted to impress this new teacher that he had already done all that the re law required. So he takes, takes a chance and asks one more question. The words may have sounded innocent, but the question behind them wasn't. By asking, who is my neighbor, the lawyer was challenging Jesus. What he was really asking was, just how far do I have to go with this love your neighbor thing? The lawyer was looking for an out. He was asking Jesus to set the minimum requirements for life in God's world. His motivation was much the same as our own. The lawyer wanted to know, wanted to be comfortable in the knowledge that he had done what was necessary to be right with God. He wanted assurance that he had met the requirements of the college course or that he had performed all the required duties of his job. At this point, Jesus turns to his favorite teaching style and tells a story. The point of the story is certainly not aimed at praising a hated member of society. In fact, since Jesus had just been rejected by the Samaritans, praising that group would not have made much sense. We also need to be careful not to see the priest and the Levite as complete bad guys. Those two were living within the rules as they had been taught. Granted, they seem to have forgotten the little rule about preserving life, taking precedence over any other rule. Still, they had temple or synagogue duties to perform and couldn't perform them if they had been defiled by contact with a corpse or with blood or, heaven forbid, a non-Jew. They were trying hard to abide by the limits that had been set for them. The actions of the Samaritan in our story were nothing less than heroic. He put aside his limits to care for a stranger I doubt that anyone today would propose that we go to the extremes that this man did. Even though we are somewhat protected by good Samaritan laws, it might be very costly to come to the assistance of someone on the roadside. Now we certainly would grab our cell phones and dial 911, and most of us would even use whatever first aid skills we had to help. In an extreme situation, we might even load the victim into our car or truck and take him or her to the nearest hospital. Some of us might even follow up on the victim's condition with a call or a visit. Those were not the Samaritan's limits, however. Besides risking his life, Besides stepping out to lead his animal as a ser servant would normally do, this guy whipped out his visa card and paid the hospital bill as well. In telling this story, Jesus was once again throwing out the rule books. The shock of the first hearers of this story is probably beyond our comprehension. It, as, at a minimum, would have been insulting to any faithful Jew. Then to add even more insult, Jesus had the nerve to tell the listeners 
to go and do likewise. How radical can you get? The Samaritan story is one we like to use to give us a greater sense of comfort. We can stay within our limits by creating a fund to help the needy. We often call those funds Good Samaritan funds. We can remain comfortable in our lives by giving, even generously, to our congregations, the United Way, and an assortment of other worthwhile charitable organizations. And we say, we've done our part to answer this, this command. Jesus, however, wasn't done with the task by simply telling a story and issuing an instruction. Jesus certainly told us what it was like to live as a member of God's creation and God's kingdom. But telling the story was not enough. Jesus lived it. Jesus took on the role of the Samaritan himself. In his life and death, Jesus taught us the true meaning of being a good Samaritan. He reset the limits for us. He set his face to go to Jerusalem where he stretched out his arms on a cross. This is how much I love you, my neighbor. These are my limits. Amen. With the whole church, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You made our follow your followers uncomfortable, Lord, when you invited them to look beyond their closest circles of belonging and serve all of your children. In the same way, 
shake up our restricted views and open us to a bigger life where anything is possible with you. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. There is need of only one thing, you and your unbounded love. Show us clearly the power of accepting the other and seeing ourselves in each person we encounter. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. You invite us to walk gently upon the earth, treating creation as our home. Give us vision in how we live on this planet and strengthen our efforts to protect and preserve all that you have made. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. Make us present to those who need our help and show us a world beyond the confines of our comfort zones. Use us as healing ambassadors to all whom we encounter and send your blessing to those who we name today, Millie, Jan, Lois, Leroy, Ann, Joe, Tony, Shirley, Joyce, Carol, Jason Elizabeth, Philip, Michael, Arlen, Herb and Greta, Betty, Elvin and Elvie, Jimmy, Debbie, Leland and Nicole, Jim, Gerald, Frank, Ovid, and their families. And we pray for all the victims of COVID-19 and those we now name either silently allowed or allowed. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. Make us one with all the saints of every time and place and inspire the deeds of our lives with their example of passion and faithfulness. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. You hear all your children's prayers and gather the lost into your loving arms. Teach us to put our trust in you and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share peace with those around us. Let us give thanks for the tithes and offerings received by mail, online, or by other means. Let us pray. We please you when we serve your children in need. Use these offerings to provide for the lack of others and to carry out your justice upon the earth. Amen. This time we celebrate Holy Communion together. If you have not already done so, please prepare your elements and let us pray. You have called us to love you and our neighbor with equal strength. And you have gathered your children with love around this table of mercy. Bring us together in one earthly family and feed us on your holy supper. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup. When he had given thanks he gave it for all to drink saying drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord has made everything ready and invites us to come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. If you have your bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life peace be with you amen let us pray God of steadfast love at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace, stay safe, share the good news. Thanks be to God.